This is Patrice Wenling at the European Society of Cardiology speaking with Dr. Joseph Alpert, who just presented the third universal definition of MI. It seems to be addressing a very pertinent clinical conundrum, doctor. Yes, uh, every day in the hospital we run into the problem of the patient who has an elevated troponin, usually not uh, having come to the hospital because of chest pain, but somebody who's had pneumonia or somebody who's had a, some sort of surgical procedure. And the question always arises and the consultation always uh, comes to us, did this patient have a type 2 myocardial infarction, that is due to increased heart rate or decreased blood pressure? Or was this an unavoidable myocardial injury that was related to circulating adrenaline and catecholamines and, uh, and other uh, uh, things, tumor necrosis factor? Uh, in which case, it's a myocardial injury not due to ischemia, therefore it's not a myocardial infarct. And the distinction there is very important because if the patient has a myocardial infarct, it triggers a whole series of therapeutic interventions. Whereas if it's a myocardial injury, you just focus on getting the patient better from their underlying condition, and they don't need a major cardiac workup. Part of this problem is being driven by the increasingly sensitive um, cardio um, biomarker assays. Some are not even yet ready in the United States. Um, when these detect um, these injuries versus um, MIs, are they considered false positives? Uh, no, we don't actually... Each time you see a troponin, there's a real heart injury. The question is, was it due to ischemia or not? With the new high sensitivity troponin test that's widely distributed in Europe and Australia, New Zealand and Latin America, um, you're gonna pick up even smaller injuries and even smaller myocardial infarcts, but they're really true positives. They tell you the heart has been injured. The real question is, was the heart injured by ischemia or was the heart injured uh, by virtue of some circulating uh, substance uh, from the immune system uh, that was not uh, inducing ischemia in the heart? Uh, because again, number one, you're gonna follow a route to take care of a myocardial infarct. Number two, you're gonna just take care of the patient's underlying medical condition or post-operative care. The guidelines also seem to be stiffening up the um, requirements for another controversial area, revascularization-related MIs. Yes, absolutely. Um, that's been an area also of considerable controversy over the, the life. This is, of course, the third document. Um, earlier documents, we said any elevation in a biomarker was an indication of, of, a, of a myocardial infarct related to the procedure. And now we realize that there are um, unavoidable small injuries to the myocardium during angioplasty or during cardiac surgery that are really not myocardial infarcts because they're not due to ischemia. And we've raised the threshold. You have to go five times, mo more than five times the, the threshold, the upper limit of normal for PCI, and more than 10 times the upper limit of, uh, of the threshold uh, f with troponin, of course, for um, patients who have coronary bypass. What is the significance for the interventionalist and the cardiologist of this? Well, um, first of all, these um, uh, the elevations are tracked, uh, you know, by a variety of quality uh, folks, uh, and uh, uh, of course. Uh, a catheterization laboratory or a surgery program that has a lot of these marked elevations, um, you know, needs to re-evaluate their procedures and so forth uh, in an attempt to eliminate these injuries. Because the long-term prognosis, particularly if the patient went over 5 with PCI or over 10 with cabbage, the long-term outlook for that patient is less good compared to the one, the person who'd had less than those elevations. So it's both important for the patients, but it's also a, a quality indicator. Right now, there isn't any um, reimbursement for myocardial injury versus MI. So how is this going to play off going forward? Well, that's, uh, of course, the, the $6,400 million question. Um, I think the important point is we're lobbying very hard that there should be a, a, a Re reimbursement code for myocardial injury because the patient who has let's say pneumonia and who has an elevation in troponin is sicker and has a worse prognosis than the same I, let's say an identical patient with pneumonia who didn't have a bump in troponin uh, it's it's a marker of increased sickness of the patient and therefore need for increased um, attention by the physician and by the hospital staff and so forth so um, we think it means more work and therefore there should be more reimbursement as opposed 
opposed to the patient who didn't have a bump in troponin. And all of that's being, you know, lobbied for and worked on right now. Since these um, high sensitivity troponin tests are not yet available in the United States, are these guidelines kind of coming out ahead of the curve, giving uh, U.S. physicians a, a chance to kind of get ahead of what's coming? Or are they already in the midst of this clinical quandary? They're already in the midst of it using the, the, the lesser sensitivity troponin test. Um, it will just become slightly magnified when we have the high sensitivity. And the Europeans are already dealing with, with exactly that problem. Um, on the other hand, you could say, hey, we're picking up patients who are sicker um, with the high sensitivity test, and we should be paying more attention to them. So, uh, I, you know, I think in the end, it, it's going to benefit patients once we sort out all of the legal and, and financial uh, aspects of it. Thank you, Dr. Albert. This is Patrice Wenling with Cardiology News at the European Society of Cardiology meeting in Munich.